Since time immemorial, wood has been the most ancient building material. Shelters, huts, houses, churches, and other buildings were erected using it. The complexity of the buildings increased over the years, as did their height. To date, the tallest wooden structure in the world is the Sanctuary of Truth, located on the shores of the Gulf of Thailand in the north of Pattaya. Its construction began in 1981 and the planned completion date is 2025. The height of the sanctuary or temple is 105 meters. Inside it is divided into four halls, Chinese Buddhism, Hinduism, Cosmogony, the doctrine of the creation of the universe, and worship of its elements. For the construction of the temple, valuable tree species are used, gold and silver teak, black ironwood and mahogany. The uniqueness of the temple lies in the fact that all the carved sculptures, like a construction set or puzzle, are brought together into a vast building. Even though more than 200 skilled craftsmen work continuously on the building, the entrance for visitors is open, you just need to put on a helmet. It's an impressive place, but let's find out how things are with residential buildings made of wood. The use of timber structures is transforming the world of skyscrapers and high-rise buildings, ushering in a shift away from traditional architectural practices dominated by steel and concrete. In recent years, 44 high-rise wooden buildings with a height of more than 14 floors or 50 meters have been built in the world. In 2015, the 14-story Treat Skyscraper Center in the Norwegian city of Bergen was considered the tallest residential building in the world. The height of this 62 apartment building is 52.8 meters. The load-bearing structures of the building are made mainly of glued beams, a building material made by longitudinal gluing of wooden boards or lamellas with waterproof glue. Concrete was only used for the three main floors, which served as platforms for four tiers of stacked modular sections. However, two years later, the Brock Commons Tallwood House in Vancouver took the lead in terms of height, in Canada. Its construction began in 2017 and was completed in a record 70 days. The height of the skyscraper was 53 meters with a total of 18 floors, but it cannot be called a completely wooden building since, according to local regulations, wooden structures are allowed in the construction of objects no higher than six floors. But thanks to the use of reinforced concrete structures in the most important parts of the building in terms of fire safety, staircases and stairs, elevator lobbies, etc., the developer managed to get approval for the project. The Brock Commons Tallwood House is now a student residence. In 2019, it gave the lead to the skyscraper Hohoien, Vienna, Austria. Its height is 84 meters, the area is 25,000 square meters, and the number of floors is 24. About 75% of the building, framework, facade, walls, interior decoration, is wood. This is a modern structural wood in the form of plywood and composite materials for beams, columns, ceilings, and facade panels. The rest is reinforced concrete, concrete and glass. In fact, a wooden building was erected around a reinforced well made of concrete with elevator shafts, stairs, communications and engineering systems. However, in the same 2019, Norwegian builders overtook the Hohoien by one meter and introduced the world to the 18-story Nyosa Tower with a height of 85.4 meters. The tower is located in the city of Brumundal, an hour and a half drive from Oslo. Both the supporting structure and the facade of the tower are made using wooden materials. The load-bearing structure consists of glued columns, beams, and diagonal elements. The first 10 floors, where various offices and a hotel are located, are built from prefabricated wooden elements. The flooring of the upper stairs on which the apartments are located is made of concrete. This decision was made due to the increase in the amplitude of oscillations as the number of stories of the building increases, regardless of the material with which it is built. In addition to Norwegian glued laminate lumber and cross-laminated timber panels CLT, Finnish-made glue lamb veneer load-bearing structures were used in the construction. The main elements of the supporting structure are large-size roof trusses made of glued laminated timber along the facade surfaces as well as columns and beams inside the building. 
Trusses resist gravity in the horizontal and vertical directions and provide the necessary rigidity to the tower. While inside, you have an opportunity to see almost all parts of the supporting structure. CLT panels serve as secondary load-bearing parts in elevator shafts and places for stairs without being connected to glued laminate timber components. To increase resistance, the binding in construction is made of volumetric diagonal elements arranged crosswise along the facade. Thousands of steel self-tapping screws, nails, and plates are used when connecting wooden parts to each other, and steel to wood to redistribute the load. The beams are fastened to the end beams with steel self-tapping screws with a double start thread. Also, self-tapping screws were used to connect the end beams to the floor elements. Rafters made of laminated veneer lumber and floor elements are connected both with nails and self-tapping screws. Floor elements are fastened with special plates. But before the first tenants and owners had time to move into their apartments in Miosa, the news appeared that they were going to build the tallest wooden house in the world in Switzerland, and its height would be 100 meters. The Schmidt Hammer Lassen Architects Danish company has won an international architectural competition for the design of the world's tallest wooden house, to be built in Winterhur in the canton of Zurich. Construction work is scheduled to be completed in 2026. The 100-meter tower and the complex next to it will be called the Rocket and Tiger. The complex will consist of four buildings, which will accommodate not only apartments but also a restaurant, retail space, a bar, and a hotel. Moreover, student dormitories have been designed there. Unlike other wooden structures with a concrete base, the frame and core of the future tower will be made of stabilized wood. The wood-based building materials for this project are being developed by the Implenia Swiss Company and the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. They expect to obtain such a modification of wood which will preserve the integrity of the structure at a height of up to 100 meters. They promise to use only those materials in the decoration the production of which does not create carbon emissions. But do not forget that wooden skyscrapers have significant drawbacks. They include earthquake resistance as well as wind resistance and, of course, dubious fire safety. We do remember very well why in due time people switched from building wooden structures to stone ones. Fire destroyed entire streets and cities. However, modern woodworking technologies make it possible to design and build high-rise buildings that, in terms of quality, resistance, durability, and safety, will not differ from those made of concrete or brick. Studies have shown that wood itself has high fire resistance since it protects itself by charring. Despite the spread of flame, for a long time there is no destruction of wooden structures. At the same time, structures made of reinforced concrete when exposed to fire literally fall apart to the state of sand, and metal structures can soften and deform. At the same time, wooden multi-story buildings have several undoubted and important advantages compared to buildings made of concrete and metal. First of all, it is their environmental friendliness. Both the construction and maintenance of buildings account for 40% of global energy consumption and about one-third of greenhouse gas emissions. But while concrete releases massive amounts of carbon, trees instead absorb it through their lives. If these trees are then turned into solid wood, this carbon is locked up or sequestered rather than released into the atmosphere when the tree dies. This is supported by studies showing that one square meter of the area supported by a steel beam releases 40 kilograms of CO2 and requires 516 megajoules of energy. Concrete is not much better, containing 27 kilograms of CO2 and 290 megajoules of energy. In contrast, a square meter of floor space supported by a wooden beam emits only 4 kilograms of CO2 and requires only 80 megajoules of energy. In other words, building one square meter out of wood instead of steel would reduce carbon emissions to one-tenth of what it originally was. This conclusion is supported by another study which found that emissions throughout the life cycle of wooden houses are 74% lower than those of steel houses and 69% lower than those of concrete houses. For instance, the developers of the Ascent Apartment Homes in Milwaukee claim that the use of wood in it is equivalent to removing 2,100 cars from the road. 
If we talk about the cost of switching to wooden structures, it should be noted that the price of cross-laminated timber has decreased in recent years and is now on the same level as traditional materials. For example, the cost of building the Mjosa Tower, according to the developer, is quite comparable to the cost of an alternative variant made of steel and concrete. As you can see, wooden high-rise buildings are gradually becoming a trend. New technologies have breathed new life into this wonderful type of building. In the near future, we will most likely see the growth of new wooden buildings.